Hello, welcome to Pro Modeler. Um, for this month's build, we're going to be doing the Hobby Boss 148 scale um, A10A Thunderbolt 2. Um, and at the same time, we're going to be actually fitting it with the Aries um, the cockpit set. Very nice resin one, comes with a seat, belt, harnesses, and all the other bits and pieces, which is really nice. And also, we're going to be using uh, Read Air Publications uh, book on the A10. Um, Thunderbolt. Now I know I've spoken about the F-16 book on this, they also do the F-15 as well so you know obviously not only do you get cracking overall um, pictures like this you know obviously we're talking incredible detail right the way through page after page which will really give us a great insight of how to detail and make the actual aircraft look better not only obviously we've got the different versions but there's just very very detailed shots on little areas where you would never find the pictures before certainly cockpits bits and pieces like that um, and if you are thinking of obviously upgrading to the new C variant um, A10 we've got pictures along that so that's absolutely great and obviously right on to the weapons and bits and pieces on the website itself there is various photos that I did of all the walk around of the A10 from Ria a few years ago as well so you can obviously get those pictures there so if we have a quick shifty in the box just for a moment um, being hobby boss comes in a very very sturdy box as we would expect um, the instructions are a little bit fold out giant map size so we have to sort of you know um, get these as it was it's not like a book if you like it's quite a, a large sheet and does it like that it's quite well detailed anyway um, you get the color um, call out there with the sheet which is also very nice like that decals obviously um, we've got basically two different ones we've got the old Toro A10 with the, the very famous sort of shark nose mouth which we'll be doing because it's actually a bit of a personal favorite of mine um, weapons fit itself very very nicely done nice recessed panel lines are throughout um, you've got the new type jammer as well which is quite handy and the old type um, and little things for updating and bits and pieces like that the weapons especially the CBUs the cluster bomb units um, they're very nicely done certainly it's the oldest style uh, laser guided bombs but you get all the racks all the weaponry you could ever imagine which is certainly an upgrade from other kit manufacturers as you can see it's all still bagged um, some people say that it's overdone with the riveting and bits and pieces personally I quite like it it will show up nicely with the wash the other thing you get which is quite a nice touch is you get a little box here and in here although admittedly we won't be using some of it because we're going to be replacing it um, but you've got the tub which is separately done it's quite basic but the seat is a lovely little aces 2 ejector seat very nicely done very crisp molded um, certainly shoulder harnesses there's no lap belts on it but obviously we'll be replacing that anyway clear parts are screwed um, no center seams or anything to worry about like that so that's quite nice and the other little touches you get um, we've got the little rope and some very nice rubber tires and they're not shiny rubber either they're quite a matte quite a nice finish so we won't have to sand them down um, to do all those little bits and pieces like that so there we go that's basically a quick rundown on it it looks like it's going to be a lovely kit to build I'm really looking okay so we've removed the fuselage halves um, from the sprue we've just had a quick sort of um, dry fit just to see how we're going to look and it'll give you a general sort of size of how it's going to be and all the rest of it so that's all okay looking very nice now the first thing we're going to do is obviously we're going to crack on with the cockpit and make the necessary um, changes that are going to be needed um, to the kit to be able to get it in now the biggest point with it is usual thing um, the lovely people um, haven't actually given that much of an instruction of how it actually fits in and doesn't even tell you how to cut which areas part out of the cockpit so obviously um, I'm going to work my way through it and show you exactly which bits to cut and very much but if areas would happen to put them in it's quite handy I must admit so anyway what we're going to have to do now is remove some of the tub now being careful with this lovely detail that's all in this cockpit so what we're going to use is the razor saw and all we're going to do is you can see if I just bring you in a moment you can see where the plug mark is obviously you can see this line running down here so all we're going to do is place the razor saw on top very slowly nice long strokes we're going to cut down and we're going to follow it down this line um, just down the front here um, and then that way we know if we're level or not and then we can check on the back and that way we know we're not going to go diagonally and start cutting through the cockpit floor and various bits and pieces so if we just cut through here One little um, tip you could do, whilst I think about it, if you get yourself a little bit of blue tack, OK, 
okay? Pop it down, stick it to the, the bottom, okay? Come along and then stick your part to it. And then when you're cutting, it'll stop it sliding up and down. Now, obviously there's lots of thing with resin dust and we've covered it before, but a quick recap. This stuff is lethal. It will get in your chest and it'll be horrible. So normally if you're using it, pop on a mask, do your cutting, leave the room, let it all go down, get your hoover out, just hoover up all the bits or sweep them all off. You can do it underwater, you can do it various other bits and pieces, but at the end of the day, just don't breathe it in. Obviously, I don't have that luxury right here because I'm talking to you. Um, but normally, if I'm doing any type of work of resin, I have a respirator on, I cut it out like this, and then literally I'll pop back into the room about half an hour later when it's all done, and then that way, I know I'm not breathing any of the horrible nasties in because it would have all settled and then normally just whip around with a hoover. With this it's not too bad because obviously we're using a razor saw and the dust is very very thick. Um, if we were using you know your sort of standard um, files and various bits of piece perhaps with filing it off you know it might be a bit, a bit of a different story. Okay so we're turning over we're going to go in from the other side because we're starting to slide slightly off course. So by going in from the other side now, it will just counter both bits. Just cut down. Okay, we've got the same on both sides. So we're just gonna bring it up, have a look down, see how we're cutting through. We're going through quite nicely, so we'll carry on from the top half. With through. There's your plug, that's the bit that literally sits on top, we've poured the resin on. This is the bit we want, obviously we haven't gone through the floor and all the rest of it. So we give it a bit of a tap. Okay now a quick little tip with this, obviously you could just come along with your hoover, make sure all your parts are free and just suck all this dust up. I'm not even going to keep that bit of blue tank, but literally if you get a wet piece of bounty, wipe it all over, it will get rid of all this dust and you won't be breathing it in. Okay, so that's the, the nasties off of the tub. And so we roughly cut it out. I haven't sanded it down or anything else like that. But there we go, we got the tub. If we bring it in nice and close. There we go, just like that, um, off the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect, nobody's ever gonna see it. So basically when it comes along, it's gonna sit in here and it's gonna line up with that top. This area up here is gonna line up and just slide in just like so. Now we've still got to take this front panel out, which we'll do in a moment, but for the moment we're just going to concentrate on how the tub is going to fit, and obviously these are the locating tabs and take care of. Um, there's one long bar one, which you can see here, Oops. which if I show you with the other one, uh, as you can see I've already taken it off of this one, um, which would have been there. Simple way of doing it, keeping it flat down, remember if you want to use a bit of blue tack, or white tack, whatever you've got handy, put a blob down on your bench, Put it on top, okay, that'll just hold it there, so you could if you wanted to, do it one-handed. Um, but all you do is basically give it a good old rub, and there's a couple of ejector pin marks, and you can make sure they're all flush and down and everything. And all you're going to do is sand that one off, just the same as the other one. So we're using quite a coarse, it doesn't have to be particularly nice, so we're just trying to get rid of it. Every now and again, just like I do, give it a wipe on your jeans just to clear the file. It'll just make it work a little bit more effectively. So there we go, that's all just gone. Right, that's as near as you're going to get. You don't have to worry so much about um, normal styrene dust. I don't think it's quite as toxic as obviously resin dust, but obviously there again, if you don't want to breathe it in long term. Okay, so basically we're going to use this side because we've got the, the little well on this bit here. Um, and obviously we've got the dip in the um, side of the tub, which obviously, so that fits in there. Now what we need to do is just make sure we're looking okay on height and various bits and pieces. Okay, so let's say the next bit we're going to get in is obviously the cockpit. Now I've taken out obviously the little bar mark, as we were saying, that's there. But also on this one, I've taken out the front of the actual um, panel where the heads up display goes, as you can see it in here. I bring in a little bit closer. So you can say if I marry these two up, you can see exactly what I've done. You see, I've taken this one off. Now all we've done is follow the line of the actual HUD where it's a step. Now I went along with a little knife and scored it all the way around and then just popped it out. You could cut to the inside and sand it back out, whichever way, it's your own sort of personal choice of how you want to do it. 
So basically what we're doing, we're just going to test fit and see how it's all going to go in. Um, so we've got our little panel here, so that fits on the front like that. Okay, and then we've got our major panel which we've taken all those bits off for the moment. Now just to help it into place, and we know it's going to be too tall because obviously we've got bits of blue tack on here. Let's get that one out and pop that in like so. Okay, let's get the top one in, but it'll give us an idea about the width and how it's all going to sit and how it's going to be. So there we go, it's going to sit just like this. Okay, and we've got these two little tabs here, which we're not too sure on if they're going to interrupt with anything on here at the moment or how it's actually all going to affect. Basically, we're going to line it up. The tub sits on the top there, and then it's going to go in just like so. And as you can see there, it's going to line up quite well. And what we'll do is, because of the little gaps running around there, we can't tell exactly how it's going to butt up yet. But if there is a small gap like that, we'll probably just put a drop of PBA in there and let that come across because then the windscreen itself is going to drop down over the top of it and take care of that. But I'm pretty happy with that. That looks like it's going to be a pretty nice fit in there. Obviously, we've still got to put on the actual sides uh, onto the cockpit as well, but this is all going to be part of the actual stages where we're doing it. So what we do, we take off this other top of the HUD as well. So we're all lined up there then and we're all ready. We can then get this painted up, we can get the side walls done and this entire area all ready and then we can think about trying to put the cockpit in. The thing to remember with actually doing this kit though, is obviously we've got the gun. Now the gun is an absolute beautiful piece of kit, very well engineered. Thing is, once it's in, you're never gonna see it again. Um, so, you know, it's a bit of a shame really the way it actually works, because you actually build the entire gun, which will go through all the motions with it, and it all fits inside here, and there's very nice detail, um, what they've actually done for the inside there. Shame you're never gonna see it, because by the time the halves come together, that's it. You could just literally bun the front, on here and you'd never see it again. So, a bit of a shame about that, but never mind. Okay, so the next thing we could do, we've got this all cleaned up and we're all ready to be fitted in. So what we're gonna do is our standard US um, cockpit color, which in this case is Tamiya XF54, which is dark sea gray, but it's a standard gray color that's in there. It's a pretty much the spot on match for it. Now, this is almost empty and dead. It's pretty well been thinned before, but I'm hoping it's got just enough to do what we need. So we've just got a bit in there, and all we're going to do, we're going to spray the actual tub here. Just going to lightly dust it all over. And get in amongst everything. Because this will be our base colour for everything else that goes on. Obviously I know the back areas are going to be black and other bits and pieces. I tried to spray the entire thing in that way. If I'm going to come along and hand paint it afterwards, um, it's just going to make everything a lot easier. So that's that. And then we've got these nice side cushions which will wash and weather as well. And we'll do those. We'll do the tops again. So it's just easier when we pick out the black for hand painting. Like so. And then all we're going to do We'll just whip these halves apart and we're just going to give it a, just a gentle dust just in case there's any show through. Just in case. And there we go. We just both sides. Then we can go back to our tub again. Cutting to air, drying it all off. Back to paint. Oops, and there we go. So we'll just let those dry for a moment and then we can start our usual detailed work as we've done with all the other ones of picking out obviously the actual black areas of the panels, the various bits and pieces, so forth and so on. And for that we'll be using our references we've got with um, the Reader Aviations book here, um, which show absolutely fantastic detail as we were saying of these actual areas. Um, certainly the cockpit panels here yeah, right down to each individual switch and button and areas and showing exactly where they all are so it'll make it fantastic for doing painting work because we can pick out and basically match every single colour um, that is needed to go right the way through. So that's what I'm going to basically do. Now I've showed you many many times of how to paint up the cockpit so I'm not going to bore you with it again I'll just crack straight on with it and then um, you can meet me at the end.
Okay, so there we go. We've got the cockpit tub all done. If I just bring you in, obviously you've just seen the stills of it all coming together there. Um, but you can see, basically we've got the sides on. We've had to do the usual. Now, obviously don't panic. I know that looks probably a little bit raw along there, but it's actually super glued behind it. Um, so that's all that is. And as you can see, we've got the tub. We put a little bit of clear uh, green at the top there. Let's just move you out a little bit and it'll focus in a bit better. Okay, just like that. And then we've obviously worked the copper area in but what we've had to do is sand down those sides, um, both the sides, this side as well, right down to make it a better fit into the actual cockpit area. But basically that's just a mixture of the wash on top. You can see the gray wash here down the back, um, various bits and pieces, and the light wash to do the demarcation between the instrument panels and the bits and pieces like that. So that's all that done. So now it's just a case of getting it fitted in. So what we'll do, we're just gonna do a bit of a test fit at the moment, if I get a block of blue tech and we just pop it in there like that and it'll give this something to sit on. Now we've got these little locating tabs at the back here um, which are just here. We're going to leave that because this actually sits onto it nicely. Okay and let's put that one in so we just stick it in like that and we can bring our other side up and marry it up. Uh, and then what we're just trying to do Like that, let's take a band. Carefully wrap it around the back. Avoiding that. And there we go. We can see, bring you in nice and close. We can see that the cockpit tub is in there, just fitted in like that. Now obviously we need to check the spread um, down here at the bottom, but we can do that a little bit um, in a moment. We'll get the clear part and we'll just make sure the canopy fits on there nicely. But there we go, that's basically showing that in. Obviously we just have to pinch this front bit to hold it at the moment. But as I say, it's quite a nice fit. It does go in, it's not anywhere as bad as the, um, certainly the Phantom um, type cockpits trying to squeeze them in or the one we did on the Tomcat with Aries. Um, those ones really do take a lot of work to get in. This one's pretty straightforward. Obviously I haven't put the seat in yet, that'll go in after um, all the rest of the build's finished. But and the same with the HUD, I haven't put the actual heads up display on yet because I don't want to get it knocked off because I can just mask this area over for the moment. So that's the, basically the work of getting that out of the way. As I say, all went in very, very nicely, very happy with it. It's a lovely cockpit and obviously if you compare that to the original, um, there is really no contest, you know, it's a far, far superior um, cockpit tub. Okay, so what I've done, I've basically super glued this back part under here so we get a nice join where this back part goes in. And I haven't, if you can see there, um, there we go, you see it moves forward. I haven't glued this front part and then we can pull it all in nicely together. So what we've done is say glue underneath into there and then we know then when the two halves come together, like so, we're gonna be absolutely fine, sorry. Uh, we're going to be absolutely fine and it's all going to join up like that. So that's really the Aries cockpit. Obviously we've still got a few bits to go on there and we've got the seat and the other bits and pieces to go on like that. But certainly now we can sort of move on now with the proper part of the build. Okay, so the next thing we can do, um, obviously because the gun's not going to go in, so we're not going to worry about that. What we've actually got is the wheel well um, bay, which we put together. It's a three piece, simple go together. But obviously when we drop it in, we haven't got any clearance with the bottom of the, the actual um, well itself of the tub. So what we're going to do, if you look down um, how it actually sits, so I'm trying to get you the light, you can see it's literally this just this top corner uh, right here that's just a little bit high. And there's not a lot in it either. We're just literally talking um, a few mil um, needs to come off just to make it a slightly more snug fit. It can probably get away without actually doing it, but we just want to make sure it's going to be nicely fit. So what we're going to do, pop out the Dremel which we've got here, as you can hear firing up, and just out of shot. So there we go, we just trimmed a little bit off of this edge. And then hopefully this will come in as it does and fits in there a lot better. So what we can actually do now, if we just put these two halves together, like so, they certainly go together a lot easier these days. Um, so if I just use a band for the moment, and we just band the back of this cockpit up, just like so. Okay, then we can check the height on this wheel well again and just see if it fits in there and how it's all going to fit and play. There's a couple of little location tabs you have to take care of to get it all 
to fit in. It could be a tad bit tricky. That's an easier way of doing it. And as we can see, it fits in there very nice, all very flush, so that's fine. And so we don't have to worry about this height business anymore for the tub. So there's two ways we can do it. You can either actually put this in and build it all in there together, or just glue the fuselage halves together and then put this in and away you go. But just check in the bits and pieces. It would be just the gun that goes in there. But as I said, because we're gonna have the gun as a separate fit, literally the gun is just gonna pop in the end, just like that, and we'll have the gun as a separate. Okay, because we've, um, obviously we're not gonna put the gun in, um, I'm a little concerned about it being a tail sitter. Now, I haven't been around the net and actually looked at anybody who else has built one of these yet, so I'm not sure even if it is a tail sitter or not. But thanks to my place having a new roof recently, I've got loads and loads of these little coils of um, lead, which were just obviously their scraps out lying around, so I went around and picked them all up. So it comes handy. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna put in a little bit of lead, um, obviously you could use anything from pennies to whatever and I'm just going to pop it in just in the nose wheel here um, just down like that going to glue it in and then pop this entire section underneath now it is quite a fiddly section to get in don't get me wrong you have to put the nose in first um, so to drop that in and I've cleaned up the edges because they were just all a little bit wonky and not square and it makes for a far far better fit but this area in here this has um, it's quite a, obviously you've got a gap and you've got to try and sort of marry this all up in there. So a way of doing that is the way I'll do it, is do a little bit of super glue, bit of kicker, hold it, let it stick and work my way along it all. Then we'll sand it and rescribe it. And that's the way I've done all the A10's noses. Um, obviously the other A10 that's on the site at the moment, um, that's in the photo gallery when I built the Italieri one. It'll be a similar thing. So some nice still shots of it there. Don't forget also on the forum as this is going on, I'm going to put it up there tonight um, and that will be sort of running through and there's lots of stills and various bits and pieces of obviously little tricky bits um, and a lot more sort of detailed and you can ask sort of questions and shout on it as and when you like. So that's a lot easier. I thought for everyone but obviously this side here is a nice fit it's just this one here so we're going to get that lead in and we're going to get this section all put together underneath 